In this video, we're going to take a look at some surfacing tools in Fusion 360 on how to blend multiple corners on a design. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about surfacing tools. I want to get started on a surfacing series, and I've been hesitant to this point because the last surfacing series I started modeling a Bronco using surfacing tools, I ended up abandoning because I wasn't happy with the surfacing tool results. That's not to say that we can't use the surfacing tools in Fusion because there are plenty of cases where I do use them and they are handy. So what I wanna cover in this video and potentially more in this series is I wanna talk about some case studies, some instances where you have to make a decision on whether or not you're gonna use a surface tool and whether or not you're gonna pick a specific tool. So if you wanna follow along, you can go to the description of the video and download the data set that you see on the screen. This is essentially a GoPro camera. It's the basic shape. We've got a back piece, we've got the main body, and we've got this front piece. Now, the idea for this design is that we want to create a fillet to blend this corner and this corner together. Now the outside shape here, these fillets were not created with a typical fillet, they were done using curvature based fillet. Now if we have the fillet tool and we select an edge, we have the option to change from tangency to curvature. Now the problem that we have here when we use this tool is not all cases will allow it to be created. Now in this instance, if I try to go down to a one millimeter or two millimeter curvature based fillet, you can see it just doesn't work on this edge. If I instead try to do that on this edge here, let's say that we do a three millimeter curvature based fillet, maybe we want to increase that to four, we can see exactly what's happening on the screen. It is creating that blend for us. If we try now to apply a fillet here, even if it's two millimeters, we can see that it is able to blend. We change it to curvature based. We do get a result, but honestly, the result is not ideal. If I use control and four on the screen to hide the edges, we can see the direction of the blend. We can see how the reflections and the shadows appear on the design. And we can see that there is an edge here and it is pretty visible just on the screen on the model. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about ways in which we can use surface tools to create a better blend and some of the things that we need to be careful with. So in order to do this, I wanna to navigate to my surface tools and I'm gonna begin by selecting all these faces that were created with the fillet and hitting delete, just getting rid of them. Now, the first thing that I want to note is that the surfacing tools will have some strengths and some weaknesses, and these are things that we need to be aware of. The first thing that we should be aware of is that when we're using surfacing tools, we want to make sure that the input edges are as clean and minimal as possible. Now, if possible, you want to go from a single edge to another single edge, especially with something like a loft. In a case like this, where we have this little bump here, this is going to be problematic. We're not gonna fix it yet because I wanna talk about why it's problematic before we worry about fixing it. And the other side of this, I don't really like the way that this transitions here. So there are multiple segments on this edge and just the direction of travel is not ideal. So we're gonna fix that as well. But before we do, let's try to use the patch tool. Let's make sure that we group all edges together and we use curvature continuity. When we use curvature continuity, we do get a result, and this might be okay for whatever your design is. This might be a fine solution for you, and you can just stitch them together and be on your way. What I wanna do is I wanna take a look at a curvature analysis of the surrounding geometry, and I wanna identify why this is potentially problematic. When we're taking a look at the first type, the Gaussian type, as we increase the scale, one thing that we're gonna notice is that the, the curvature, the, in this case, the red and yellow and orange, appears directly at the edge of our surface. Now, this is problematic because this means that when we look at things like reflections and shadows, we're likely going to see a hard edge on our design. If we drag this all the way down, obviously we don't see anything, but as soon as we start to increase this, and as soon as there is some color variation on the screen, we are starting to see those issues here. Now, as we drag this up, and maybe if we go to a banded, you can see that we also are getting a point connecting at this intersection edge right here. Now, if we change this to a principal maximum, what we're looking at is the radius of curvature here. 
And one thing we note at certain points, you can see that these red sections get disjointed. And when it goes across the edge, there is a slight jump here. And what this is telling me is that the radius of curvature is not consistent across that edge. Now, there are points where we increase this and it appears that it's consistent. But again, if we zoom in, we can see that there is a disjoint there. Now, sometimes those can be fixed by stitching these surfaces together. But in this case, it's still problematic. And I want to fix this first. So I'm going to delete that surface. I'm going to start a new sketch on this top face. And I'm going to use my line tool and just create a vertical line. And what I'm going to do with this vertical line is I'm going to trim this section. Now, in some instances, the trim tool will be just fine. You can select the areas you want to remove. However, in this case, that's going to remove everything on the right hand side. So when you run into this situation, you either need to untrim your surfaces or you can use something like split face. For split face, select the faces that we want to remove and we're going to select our tool, say OK. And now I can select those and use delete on the keyboard. What I'm looking for here is that we've got a nice straight edge and that we've got single edge selections. So we don't have any small remaining pieces of that edge there. Now that we've cleaned it up a little bit, let's try patch again. We're going to use the same sort of constraints, a curvature based constraint. And we'll just take a look at the results. So once again, curvature map analysis. And we'll use these options to see if we get any differences. So you will notice that we are still getting a point connection between those edges. Now, if I change this to our banded solution or a smooth solution, it doesn't really matter. It still hits in that same place. And once again, what this is telling me is that this is potentially problematic with the way in which Fusion is calculating these surfaces. Is that going to matter at the end of the day with your design? Probably not. Now, at the end of the day, a GoPro or action camera has a sort of a matte or a rough finish. And a lot of these reflections will never even matter. But we still want to consider these things when we're talking about design and we're deciding which tools we want to use. Once again, when we take a look at the fillet here, as we drag the maximum limit down, we still have this disjoint between these edges. Now, once again, not necessarily the end of the world, but it is problematic. And these are things that we want to at least consider when we're using these tools. There's one more thing I want to do, and that's create a sketch on this top face. And I want to fix this edge here. I want to determine where this blend is happening. In order to do that, I'm going to use my spline tool and I'm going to use a control point spline. Now, Fusion 360 is not a class A surfacing tool. It doesn't have those kinds of surfacing tools and curve constraint tools that you would find in a software like Alias. And that's okay because it's not intended to be that. However, when we're creating things like splines, we want to be very mindful of how we're creating them. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating three edges for my control point spline. I'm going to make all of those horizontal at the top and vertical at the bottom. And I also want to make them equal in length. So I'm going to make these three up here equal in length. And I'm going to make these three down here equal in length. And the reason that I want to do that is because I want to take a look at this curvature. And using curvature combs, what I'm looking for is a nice bell shaped transition in this corner. Now, if we drag these back, what you can see here is that we can create a flat spot in the corner. And what I'm really looking for in a situation like this is that nice bell shape. Using this adds to the divisions for the curve. It adds to the control. And this is a better way for us to be able to control these splines when we're talking about things like consumer products. So we're going to finish the sketch. Once again, we're going to use our split face tool. We're going to split the side face. We'll select this. And then we can delete this edge. Once again, what we're looking to do is we're looking to have a nice single selection. And you can see we don't have that here. So this tells me there is a potential problem with my sketch that I want to address. Now, if we take a look at this, it appears like there was already a division on this edge here. You can see that we have a potential problem there. If you run into this, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the end of the world. It doesn't mean that you can't use this curve. It's just something that we should be mindful of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this end result. 
and determine whether or not I can use this. Because I know my spline was nice and smooth, this little section here is likely a result of that small piece we removed before using our straight line. These types of things in Fusion tend to give surfaces the most trouble when we're trying to talk about quality of surfaces. So if you can avoid this, I would strongly recommend it. A way that we could avoid it here is by wrapping this thing around, but I'm not gonna go to that length. What I wanna do is I wanna talk about creating a loft here versus a patch and what the difference is gonna look like. So for me, I wanna select this. I'm gonna use Control C and Control V to create a copy. And I just wanna move the copy forward. My reason I wanna do that is because I wanna create a surface using patch and one using the loft. So let's go back to the patch tool. Let's patch this new opening because we broke that segment up. Once again, using curvature continuity, we can see how that changes the surface. If we change it to tangency or just connected, you can see how those surfaces look different. If we're not grouping edges, we do have the option to change the weight at each individual edge. So for example, for edge four, I might determine that I want to have more or less influence here. However, with Fusion 360, that oftentimes is gonna mean that your, uh, your patch in this case is going to fail because what we're saying is we've got 1.5 weight here, but as soon as it gets to this corner, it's got 0.5 and 0.5 over here, and it just isn't able to come to a, a solution that works. So for us, I think that's gonna be okay. I'm gonna stitch these together, and as, so as soon as we see that complete green border and say okay, it turns it back into a solid body. Now let's take a look at a loft and some of the things we might have to do to get a loft to work. So the loft can fill in the same space. Typically with a loft, you want to have a start and an end profile. You can have mid profiles. And in a case like this, we wanna use guide rails as well. There are two types of guide rails that we can have, ones that are on the external or connected to our profiles or ones that are center line. In this case, because we have a complete boundary, we're going to select these edges as our first profile, and this is our second. Before I select my guides, I wanna take a look at curvature continuity and what that looks like. When we automatically put in curvature continuity, we can see that the design fails because it has self-intersecting geometry. One thing we can do is we can change the edges and allow it to align the edges to the selections that we have. So in this case, what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow those edges to carry on as if we had those guide curves. Next, I'm gonna add the guide curve, noting that this edge here looks more like the original fillet. And when we add our guide curve, we have to select that small section because it says it's missing that rail. And you can see this is where we start to run into issues because it says that it's still missing that section. So one thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we're getting the entire thing. And it probably means that there is a small section on the inside of that rail that's missing that we're not able to select. And this is where we run into those problems. So let's go ahead and grab the other rail and see if that one has any trouble. We'll use curvature continuity. And you can see everything works okay here. So the problem with this one is that we need to figure out a way to select that entire edge. Now we can turn on chain selection and you'll notice that the selected rail does not touch all the profiles when we use the chain selection. And that's because it needs us to select everything. When we turn off chain selection, it allows us to make those manual selections. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button and see if I can select those edges. It tells me that the rail is not smooth, even though I know that it's connected here. So again, these are the things that we run into with these lofts and potentially problematic because of those little, uh, those little edges or those little jogs. So how do we get around this and how do we fix it? Well, one way that we can get around this is by creating another sketch on the side. Now, in this case, what I wanna do is use my line tool. I'm gonna to come up. I'm gonna draw a line just vertically. I'm gonna give it a small dimension of one millimeter. And then on the other side, I'm gonna draw a line here. And once again, I'm gonna give it a one millimeter dimension. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm gonna essentially rebuild this curve, but I'm gonna do it a millimeter away from the edge. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because I wanna get away from that, the divided segment here. So once again, I'm gonna make three edges and then we'll make three edges over here, connect them, green check mark, and then we'll use horizontal vertical, horizontal for those three, 
vertical for these three. We could also do collinear. That would work just fine as long as one of them are um, horizontal, and one of them is vertical, and we'll make these equal. Now we can bring this out. We can turn on the curvature comb so we can see what we're working with here and just make sure that we do have that nice shape that we're looking for. Once we have that, once again, we can use this as a trim tool or to split the face. We'll go ahead and we'll select this. And now we can remove this. Now, theoretically, we should be able to carry these three edges. And this is now a single edge selection. So if we go back to our loft tool, our first profile is going to be these three edges. Our second profile is now going to be those two edges. And then we want to use our guide rails, which now the guide rail should work fine. And once again, we're going to use curvature continuity. Make sure that we are using the option to use aligned edges. Now in this case, aligned edges and aligned to surface will likely produce the same result. And I'm gonna turn on curvature continuity and see that we're getting problems here. So while it looked like it was going to be promising initially, we are still producing some issues. A part of the reason is because the patch surface defaults to a 0.5 tangency weight, while when we're using things like loft, it defaults to a one tangency weight. So reducing that to 0.5 sometimes will be okay. Sometimes we might need to use tangency instead of curvature continuity, and that'll help solve the issue. Now, it's not ideal, but again, these are the things that we run into with these tools, and oftentimes we have to make some design decisions. Another thing that I wanna do is I wanna take a look at that first profile and potentially reduce the weight a little bit. I wanna take a look at the second profile and potentially increase the weight a little bit and just see what those results look like. So when I take a look at these profiles, what I'm trying to get from just the preview on the screen is this little bump here. I really don't want that bump to be there. I want this rail to uh, sort of drive the curvature a little bit better. If I change this to tangency and I change this to tangency, so everything is tangent, this gives me a little bit better result, but still not ideal, still not perfect. So you can play around with the weights, see if you can come to a, a situation where the weights are working for you. Ultimately, I think patch in this case is going to be better, but let's go ahead and stitch these together and take a look at our final results. So now we have two variations of this. And again, the things that we want to look at are the ways in which the reflections happen on the design. We can see that the patch has a nice smooth transition while the loft is cutting itself back. And some of the ways that we can get around these sorts of problems is to split the geometry up again, define the boundaries of the loft so that way we can control this section and then we can come back and then we can, we can sort of work in that corner. Let's take a quick look at the curvature map analysis for both of these to look at the differences and then we can go back and try to work on this one a bit more. So one thing that you're going to notice, a difference between the loft and the boundary or the patch is the fact that this edge here almost seems to carry into the curvature. Now, again, if we play around with the scale a little bit, that's going to change. But where the original patch had that small point that happened at that corner, you can see here with the loft, it's a little bit more apparent that that's driving our curvature. It's pushing into this corner. And that ultimately is gonna be problematic. And again, if we go to our principal maximum, taking a look at the radius of curvature, one thing that we will notice here is that on the patch, we have that small bump here, but the curvature is fairly consistent. When we take a look at the loft, we can see that it's dipping back into the right. Once again, not necessarily a non-starter. These are just things that we want to look at. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at those, let's go back and talk about this loft one more time. So that loft, I am going to hide and I am going to break this design up once more. So I'm gonna start a new sketch. I'm gonna use my project tool and I wanna project this point. So that's P on the keyboard and I'm gonna use my line tool. I'm gonna to carry this line out to this point and finish my sketch. Now I wanna use my split face and this will be my line tool. And what I've done is I've simply divided this face up. What this allows me to do is create a loft 
going from this straight section to this curved section. I can use this guide. I can add tangency or curvature continuity, whichever method I want to use. Make sure that I do use the aligned to edges option to make sure that we can control this. And what we should be able to see is that now with these profiles, we have a little bit more control over the weight and the way in which the surface is being built. So we can modify the weights of each of these handles. As soon as we add our guide rail, it sort of adds an extra level of control that is, uh, that is driving the design. But in this case, we can play around with those and see if we can get to a better result. Once we have this, I'm going to stitch it to the main body. And now we can either use a loft in here or we can patch this area, connect all the edges, try tangency, say okay, and we'll stitch these two together. So if we bring back our original patch and we bring back this new patch, one thing that we're going to notice is that the shape here of the reflections is slightly different. So it's a slightly different result. If I hide the edges using control four, they are very similar, but we can tell a difference between them. If I bring back my curvature map analysis between the two, um, we can see again, the loft is problematic, especially across this edge here. Now, even though we use tangency or curvature continuity, we are still seeing this drive the curvature. And if we go to our principal max, and we take a look at this, we should be able to get to a, a point where we can tell the difference between the two. It's, it's much more minor in this case, it's more similar, but there is still a slight difference there. Some other things that we can look at under the inspection tools are going to be the zebra stripes. This will give us a good idea as to how the curvature is going into and out of those corners. And as we rotate around, what we're really looking to see is as we go across edges on faces, we want to make sure that we don't see a big jump in the line. So right now you can see that the lines carry, but then they kind of wiggle a little bit. So what this is telling me is that as soon as I get across that edge, I'm likely going to see that in a reflection. Another way that we can tell is we can go into the render workspace. We can make sure that we have a shiny material. Even just at the initial surface, we can tell that there's a difference between that edge. But I'm going to go to my appearances. I'm going to go to paint and I'm just going to apply uh, a paint color. So let's go into something that's glossy and let's use a red and we'll use a red on both of those and we'll modify our setup just slightly. I'm going to use the environment background and let's try to do a grid light. So the grid light's interesting because it'll actually put some uh, some lines on there. I can change the position of the grid lights. I can rotate it around a little bit. And this is probably, that's probably good right there. And now we can take a look at some ray tracing. So I'm gonna rotate this around just slightly and start the in-canvas render. So this will start to look at the reflections that are happening. And the first thing that we're going to notice is as soon as we hit that edge, the reflection that's nice and straight along here starts to jump out and away and then wrap back up. The one where our patch is, it carries across that edge nice and smooth. As it gets back up to the top, there's a little bit of a jog in it, but that's not necessarily, again, a non-starter. As we rotate these around, let's go ahead and get the light just in the corner. Now, I know they're in slightly different positions, but we can see that there is a, uh, a smooth transition, but there's a little bit of a bump in that corner. And here you can see the bump is a little bit more drastic we rotate it to where the light connects. Once again, as it's ray tracing, we can see that there are a couple of bumps that happen in that corner while this one is nice and smooth. And once again, with something like a, a camera like this, is it going to ultimately matter? Well, it, it just depends on what the end goal. If you have a part that's gonna be in a shiny material, then when you see a reflection like this one here made with the patch versus this one here made with the patch in the loft, this is a much better end result for a consumer product than this one here. Uh, if I was looking at something that I paid a lot of money for, I wouldn't want to see a reflection that looked like this. I would want to see something that was a little bit smoother. So these are all things that we need to consider when we're talking about designs and we're talking about making these design decisions. Uh, in this case, let's go ahead and add a curvature-based fillet. 
you can see that, that that is also failing. And this is another use case where if a fillet isn't working, you need to come back and create a manual transition. That's something that we can cover another time. I think it's a bit outside of uh, what I wanna do in this video, but we are able to add a normal fillet to that corner and get it to look like a nice smooth transition. If you wanna see more of these types of videos, uh, please let me know. I know 20 to 30 minutes is a bit much for a topic like this, but these are the kinds of things that you need to think about and look at whenever you're making a product. If your end result is going to be something that's machined or injection molded, and you have to use these surfacing tools, these are the design decisions and the things that you'll have to look at along the way. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you want to join the Discord server, you can email me support at kajicator.com. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.